This video is brought to you in part by SecondChanceGaming.com. They are a direct sponsor of me and this channel, so if you're looking to buy or sell cards, then definitely check out their site linked in the description. I'm a big fan of how they do business, so check them out and let them know that Phoenix sent you. But with that out of the way, let's get straight into the video. Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! metagame discussion type video, specifically focusing on spirals. What are the viability of spirals going forward under the new November 2017 ban list, and are they still potentially the best deck going forward, considering its options that it still has available to it, weighing those against the hits that were made against it on the November ban list, and so on and so forth. Now, I should probably just go ahead and give you a quick recap in case you aren't aware, Spirals have received hits on the most recent Forbidden Limited list. In fact, that Forbidden Limited list was very catered towards Spirals majorly of the four hits that were made. Gofu was hit, which would have been a fallback plan for Spirals with the other cards that have been hit just to generate free cards for Link Summonings, as well as Gofu itself being, you know, a good enabler for link decks in general so that going to one easy to understand spiral gear drone spiral quick fix going to one that way the deck cannot abuse machine duplication and it cannot abuse more specifically the quick fix multiple quick fixes being able to revive themselves from graveyard for essentially free since they yield a search when they come out from graveyard for another spiral gear card uh, so that was addressed and then set rotation again like gofu another indirect hit to spirals meaning that set rotation for Spiral Resort is not something that, you know, happens anymore. So the deck lost a considerable chunk of consistency enabling options in the form of set rotations being gone. You're probably not going to play set rotation in Spiral anymore because that requires you to play a subpar field spell. Uh, the same reason why Zoo didn't play Takatomborg and Terratop when Terratop went to one, because it'd be one Terratop, one Takatomborg. You don't want to run those risks of literally having the same probability of drawing set rotation with that brick field spell. So it's fair to assume that spirals are just going to fall back on three resort, three terraforming, and have that basically be it. But the main main the main uh, meat of the hits is the fact that drone and quick fix are both at one, meaning that the deck can no longer use machine duplication to facilitate extensive plays for essentially no resource investment. Specifically the quick fix plus dupe play. Uh, quick fix plus dupe was actually just an insane play to look at like objectively and like looking at it on paper because quick fix plus dupe was just a raw plus four straight out of the gate you have the one quick fix that you're summoning and then the machine dupe that is in your hand and then out of those cards the quick fix that you summoned gets you a search the machine dupe gets two more quick fixes which those trigger to search as well so you ended up with three quick fixes on the board and three spiral gears searched in your hand so it was just a quick and easy plus four that also just started going into other pluses as well because you had the ability of Quick Fix to revive itself, you had Spiral uh, Spiral Mission Rescue, which was uh, a card that let you spring, uh, bring back Quick Fix. Uh, you have Spiral Gear Big Red, which let you bring back Quick Fix. There was all these different spammable options available to you. But with Quick Fix and with Drone at 1, and with Set Rotation and Gofu, essentially not real reliable options anymore, are Spirals still in contention to be a top deck, and are they still in contention to be the best deck? Now... In my opinion, with what I've seen thus far in the past 24 to 48 hours, yes, I think Spirals have very much the potential to still be not only one of the best decks, but the best deck, specifically because the deck has adapted. Just like with the adjusted list on Pepe on Full Power Pendulums, that deck evolved and became Draco Pals. It just incorporated different cards that were also good for the engine and viable options, and then the deck moved forward. So what does this mean for Spirals? Spirals still have a ton of in-engine cards that were never used before, like Spiral Tough, like any of the other stuff, but then you also have other cards that are capable options of allowing you to keep play without using Machine Dupe and without using, you know, like having to try and put your all your faith in Spiral Super Agent to call correctly and stuff like that. Specifically, Double Summon. Double Summon has been getting a lot of attention over the past 24 to 48 hours for the plays that it allows Spirals to do, and in terms of what the Double Summon plays allow, and also what, you know, just regular plays of, like, Drone plus Super Agent still allow, the deck is definitely not going anywhere. The people that think the Spirals are dead are very, very much just, mm, I... I don't understand how that could be something that people would come to a conclusion of, but then again, people also shouted at the heavens that Zodiac was dead when all that happened was Rat Pier went to two and literally nothing else was touched. I remember that ban list. People were like, Zoo is dead! Uh, uh, uh. But regardless, Spirals is one of those decks that is very unique and that it does a lot with a little. 
Specifically, all the two card combinations that that deck has access to are all very potent and very powerful, because at the end of the day, all of the deck's win condition cards are still intact on the you know, Forbidden Limited list. They are not touched. All of the deck's core win condition components are still available to you. This is something I touched on in my video yesterday, talking about the actual you know impact of the Forbidden Limited list and you know discussing the hits and stuff like that. Is that Spirals is still a very strong deck because everything is still available to it in terms of what the deck is trying to mainly do. That is to put up Sleeper plus Last Resort, plus do some simple Link plays with Double Helix plus Master Plan. Those are still very viable options and still very capable of being something that, you know, takes place. Now, all you have to do to offset the Spyro deck's, you know, losses on the Forbidden Limited list is to add extra copies of already proven good engine pieces like Spyro Mission Rescue for the Graveyard Banish effect to revive a Spiral, uh, more copies of Big Red to, you know, keep your things on the board and, you know, play through hand traps a bit more efficiently. Uh, things of that nature. There's there's a lot of different things that can change and be tweaked about the Spiral deck, but specifically, Double Summon breathes a lot of good life into this deck, essentially, because of the ability of Double Summon to allow you to open, again, yet another two-card combination that yields you a good Double Helix play. Specifically, Spiral Resort or Spiral Quick Fix plus Double Summon. Now, you may be like, oh, well, Quick Fix is at 1. No, Quick Fix is at 7. Quick Fix is at 8, even. But one for one would be bypassing the need for a normal summon, so double summon wouldn't be applicable there, essentially. But Spiral Resort or Quick Fix plus double summon still lets you do a double helix play. It still lets you do a massive link spamming play with, you know, Spiral Mission Rescues, with all this sort of stuff. And some people have even gotten to the point where they are getting close to or have extra linked their opponent using, you know, Link Karibo, Trigate Wizard, and all that sort of stuff, and then putting Spiral Sleeper on the board with a Last Resort equipped, off of two to three card combos that are enabled by Spirals and Double Summon. Double Summon is not a searchable combo piece by any means, but neither was Machine Duplication. And by all means, the Double Summon plays are not the only plays that exist here. The Double Summon plays are definitely really good, just like the Machine Duplication plays were, but the deck can still survive on its own, utilizing old tried and true plays of like Drone Special Super Agent from hand, or Drone uh, or Quick Fix Special Super Agent from hand. Like just the ability that the deck has with Super Agent specifically being able to summon itself for free from hand still allows this deck good ability to make double helix very quickly, depending on if you call the top card correctly. And this means that once again, Drone is at one. So you can't stack your opponent's deck and always guarantee the uh, Super Agent coming down, but Resort and Terraforming are still both at 3, meaning Drone being Normal Summoned is still a 7 of card copy, and then you also have access into 1 for 1 for Drone, which basically guarantees you 8 chances to draw a card that puts a card on the board that lets you guarantee Super Agent coming down. And uh, and that's something that, uh, that starts yielding you know good things for the deck. Uh, going forward in terms of uh, in terms of allowing it to play without Double Summon. While Double Summon is still a very strong extender, it still allows the deck a lot of play options. I think the deck is still very viable, and I think it's still going to force the format to main a bunch of hand traps to, you know, play against it, essentially, because the deck does still do the core basis of what it was always meant to do, which is to make a Link 3 or a Link 4 using Double Helix into Master Plan, searching cards, and then also being able to put Sleeper plus Last Resort up. Like, that still hasn't changed. So at the very core basic of the deck, you still have Utility Wire that can be potentially set. You still have Sleeper that's on the field being protected by Last Resort, which still deals with multiples of your cards. I don't see Spiral necessarily going anywhere anytime soon. If Spiral isn't at the top of your list of decks to possibly play against going into YCS San Diego or the future of this format, then you probably want to take another look at it because... People think that it lost such a huge amount of consistency, when in reality it only really lost a few of the superior, like, extending cards like Quick Fix. Uh, Drone kind of hurt as a starter to go away, but the main meat of the consistency the deck lost was in set rotation, and not really much else, because you had the Machine Dupe that gets swapped out for Double Summon, and still does the arguable same thing. Now, the deck did take a big, a bit of a sizable hit to consistency, but the deck is still super consistent in what it does because of how Spiral Resort as a card is worded and structured. Like, you still have six copies of Rhoda in your deck. You can't tell me that that's still not consistent enough for you to mess around with, but 
So, Spirals, is it the best deck? I think it has very, very high potential to basically be the best deck because, like I said, it does a lot with a little cards. It's very few, like, it's very, uh, it's very minor in terms of the resource uh, investment that you have to put in your plays because a lot of the good plays are literally two or three card combos, whereas every other deck in the format usually needs three cards minimum to do something worthwhile, whereas Spirals can do that sort of stuff with two cards, which is why the deck is good at playing all these hand traps for the mirror and stuff like that. And I would think that the format could easily, if Spirals start becoming more of a dominant force, like they were previously, could easily start going back to that hand trap format, and then we're going to be back square one where we were beforehand, essentially, of the decks that can main all the hand traps are going to be good against Spiral, and the decks that can't really afford the room aren't going to be doing that well, so... All in all, those are my opinions on the matter. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, this little podcasty type minimal edit video uh, that I kind of want to do more of. Like, I'll put like a couple card pictures in probably, or maybe just a background. I don't know. Uh, haven't really decided. I like to just talk uh, and have people be able to give me their opinions and stuff in the comments down below, as uh, as always, because like invoking discussion is how we bring more information to light, right? But anyway. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Again, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. As always, like, comment, subscribe, do all the nonsense you usually do. Links as always in the description down below. My Facebook fan page as well as my personal Patreon page. If you like the videos I've been making as of recently and want to support my ability to continue making those videos, then Patreon is the best way to do so. As well as, if you're interested in getting access to my private Discord server where me and a bunch of other people chat on a daily basis, or if you're interested in Yu-Gi-Oh! product giveaways that happen once a month, then definitely go check out the reward tiers over on Patreon and, let, uh, and see what's... Uh, see what might interest you essentially and any support you'd like to give the channel would be greatly appreciated in advance because it helps out a lot as i have already said many times in the past but anyway as always guys thanks for watching as i've already said thanks for your time as usual and take care i'll see you in the next video but anyway now the video is over i'd like to give a special thanks to travis miller iradium jay garcia yuki phoenix troy perkins and eric gertson as well as everybody else that's currently supporting me on patreon this month you guys help out a lot more than you may know. You have my eternal gratitude, and you guys are forever awesome. Thank you so much for the support.